Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl, Thick Ass Daphne, and you are watching Rolling Out. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Rolling Out Star Studio. We have a very special guest in the building tonight. We have Thick Daphne. Daphne, first things first, happy belated. How are you doing this fine Thank Thursday you. afternoon? Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm good. I'm good. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling amazing, especially better talking to you. But uh, uh, okay. I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, when I was talking to Joycey, you know, you were just setting this up and stuff. Um, I was just watching another one of your interviews on YouTube and you were talking about a lot of your outside ventures and stuff. Um, you know, a lot of times people kind of internet trolls and comments are always like, oh, these people that work in particular fields, they don't think about their future or anything outside of what they're currently doing. But I see that's something that you're already kind of focused on and already, you know, you have your feet in, you know, even doing like mainstream interviews and stuff like that. So I just wanted to know, what was that timeline like for you of thinking about, okay, I want to step into these ventures. I want to do this life after, uh, you know, kind of what was that timeline for you? Well, like I've, the timeline has always been since a child, I knew what I wanted to do. Like I knew what the end goal was always. Uh, adult entertainment is just a tool to help me get there faster in some words, you know? So the end goal has always been the same, but uh, the adult entertainment, a lot of people have this misconception that when you do these things too, it's like, oh, I did say, I, I did start because I feel like I had to start. But now when I look at it, it's a tool that helps me. It, it elevates my life. It puts me in other places, you know, so. For sure. No, no, I heard that. I heard that. And how do you think, um, you know, a lot of people say in 2022, just people in society is more progressive. They're kind of more open-minded to things. How do you think society and the industry has treated you uh, try, trying to get into comedy skits, trying to get into, um, you know, acting and mainstream acting and stuff like that? How's the industry been to you? Well, I love it. I feel like they've been treating me very well, very good. And I say that because the internet trolls, one thing I've learned from life, people are going to talk about you to the day you die and after you're dead. You know, and if they mad something Jackson, wrong, if they mad something wrong, Daphne, you know, you know, you ain't doing something right if you ain't got no haters, you know, but, um, you know, what you do doesn't define who you are, you know, as a person. And honestly, we all have sex. I just have the, a lot of confidence to do it on camera and post my work and get paid for it as well. So. Right. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So um, do you feel like just, I guess, society in general is more. Uh, receptive to those who, who are sex workers and stuff like that or do you still feel, feel like there's some stuff I feel like it's always going to be a stigma like it's sex so it's always going to be a stigma behind it you know but um that you can't let that define you and that you can't you can't a lot of people let that stop them they'll be like I do this I can't do that no personally I feel like I can do anything out of my mind to, you know so I feel like society is accepting but it's always going to be a small stigma, especially as a woman, you know, like, oh, well, you want some kids? Oh, you're going to have a husband or, you know, stuff like that. So it's like no man will want no they wife doing, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, actually, I'm OK. <laughs> it's people around who still want me, you know. So, yeah. And I can still have a child like the uterus works. So, you know, that's OK. You know, that's how I, I look at it. Society has accepted it, but at the same time, it's always going to be a stigma. Always. Right. No, for sure. For sure. And you said something that you also said in the interview with that DJ up there in, uh, in Chicago, mm -hmm. talking about um, just the power of thinking that you can do anything that, that you believe that you put your mind to. At what point in life did manifestation really kind of come into play and stuff? And you started, I guess, diving into that. Really, I've, uh, since like high school, it started young for me. Like I've, I was... Uh, I've just, I grew up in a household full of love. So they always told me, if you shovel shit, you better be best at it, you know, or like those are their real words or anything you put your mind to, you can do. So manifestation started at an early age for me, like high school, 17, 16. I knew I wanted to go to college and I played an instrument. So I knew I had to get a scholarship to go to that college. I had to. So I knew I, I'm getting a scholarship. If I put my mind to this, I'm going to get it. I'm going to do it. Like I'm just, 
and it's in you, not on you. I'm headstrong, so I know. It's like I just know. I believe in me. If anything, you know. What instrument did you play? I played the saxophone, alto, tenor, very. I don't know. So yeah. So you play all the saxophones. You played all the. The, the big ones and, and the small ones and stuff like that, all different types of poems for those of you who might not. Wow. So uh, I guess, you know, like uh, just how was it kind of working to get that scholarship and get yourself an education and I guess strive for better in life? It was uh, very hard, but I've been in band since I was a little kid. So it wasn't nothing I wasn't like familiar with. It was just at a uh, collegiate level. It's just at a higher level, you know, higher level of playing, higher level of learning. I went to the Jackson State. I marched in the sonic boom of the South. So, yes. So, uh, 16, shout out class of 16. So, you know, uh, I was, uh, that's where I came from. I just, I was living in uh, Byron for for two years and I just came back last year, uh, last year to Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, the sonic yeah. boom of the South. So, yeah. so you guys had like a lot of like expectations on you and stuff like that, I guess yes, uh, you, know, you, you were talking about kind of that pressure and everything, but I guess I was uh, playing a show band, you know, kind of helped you in the entertainment business after college. So uh, I say band and I, I tell parents this, put your child in band, it's going to build character. Like everything I learned from band, I relay in real life. Like, just keep going. Like, march forward. If you misstep, don't stop right there on that line. You better keep going and make it. You're going you gonna to mess up our diamond? You're going to miss this diamond? You know, so it's just, and that's something small that can relay big in life. Like, keep going. It's okay. Like, you know, don't give up on yourself. Be great. Like, that was a quote. We, I'm just trying to be great. I, you know how that, that was a thing, like, back in 2016, real hard. Like, man, I'm just trying to be great. That's all. So, uh. Then it was something else. It was it was a life changing experience. So that's why I do tell parents like put your child in band, whatever instrument is going to build in discipline. Like I'm very disciplined. I'm a very disciplined human. So it makes you stand like a soldier, like a statue. Like you have to listen and be quiet and take order. You know. And if you want to grow, you grow to a position where you start giving order now, and people respect you and your tone of voice, how you speak to others and things of that nature, you know? Right, no, for sure, for sure. How do you think uh, attending an HBCU, I guess, shaped your perspective and, and way of thinking in life? Oh, it was such a great experience. Like coming from where I'm from, I went to Thornton and Harvey, you know, La Diamond in the Rough and, uh, you know, growing up in the hood type of thing, and the, you know, going to see that so much black excellence it was beautiful like I think what day was it, it was probably like every Wednesday or Thursday we dressed up on campus you know just, just looking so nice and going to class and seeing black professionals and your black teachers black on black on black it was just great you know what I mean and it was real cool I loved it I loved I loved it it was just from coming from there, from the hood, to seeing all these black professionals and my family, I, my family members are like professionals in my family as well. But seeing like being emerged into it, and we all believing in something, and we're all here for, you know, different goals, but we're all here to uh, for this degree, you know, in so many words. So, um, you, you said you were very headstrong. Uh, you, you don't really let trolls and internet comments and everything like that get to you. I wanted to know you kind of touched on it a little bit, like you said coming from your background up there. Uh, you're from Chicago, right? Yes, I'm from Phoenix, Illinois. Oh, from Phoenix. So shout out to mm -hmm. Phoenix. Uh, but you know, I guess just what what all really played into that of you kind of having a strong mindset and not letting words and, you know, strangers get to you? I had a strong individuals raise me. Your, uh, your upbringing is so important. Like early I tell this to parents as well. I don't have children, but I was once a child and I do know that uh, early childhood development is so important. Like what you're telling, what you're feeding that sponge upstairs, you know, what you're feeding like. I had strong individuals, strong leaders in my life that believed in me, they believed in themselves. I never seen anyone be around me like lazy or not do or not go get it or not hustle. It, it don't matter, like my grandparents told me, if you, if you shovel shit, you be the best shit shoveler there is. And I was like, I don't wanna shovel shit, but 
I he, but you get it right. You're right. I do get it. I understand. Whatever I do, be the best. Like put your best foot forward. It may not be saying you number one. You came out number one. I've been number two before, but I every time I put my best foot forward. You know. Do Do you think you're the best right now? Yes, baby. I am the Beyonce of porn. I was I was saying like uh the uh your numbers on that YouTube interview were crazy like it popped up randomly on my homepage, and I was like three hundred thousand views like you know what I'm saying like it I was like you, you popping out that's YouTube you know what I'm <laughs> okay like, look totally, yeah you know family appropriate everything like that so um I guess just you know how how is that kind of rise for you been in that industry like um you know getting that recognition and and that type of field you know what I'm saying like you have to imagine when a lot of uh when a certain demographic looks at you in public like he said you, you talked about it you just way back whatever to cut down on the awkwardness but like how is that to know like okay they've seen me like this before they see me in a vulnerable position like this before like how have you kind of dealt with that on your rise to fame i mean like it goes back to like i said i just got the confidence to put it out there i know you obviously you were doing something to see my video you know if you if you didn't see Black Chicago be like, because some people be like, they may not know. So so they say. I don't know, you know, I, I'm only going off what they say. Some people only know me from Black Chicago be like. Some people know me from adult entertainment, you know, or some people know me from like little comedy skits with skin bone and stuff like that or whatever. So it's different avenues, and that's another thing. You can't just be this, we're multifaceted beings. It, it sex isn't just sex, sex. I'm sexy, I sell sex, I you know, I ooze it, but I also, I'm a little funny sometimes, you know, and I, I can be serious sometimes. I can be crazy. I know I'm a character. I, I love acting. So that doesn't bother me. It doesn't really bother me. Like you saw my video. I saw it too. I was there. How, did you like it? Let me know. Like what, you know, I'm that type of person. I want to know what did you think then? Let me what, what what should I do better? Let me know. It feels like very petty. Like it's like a uh, like like you tried to make this an awkward situation by saying you recognize me, and you're like two can play at that game. I can make it. And Lecrae said that. Lecrae had a line about that a few years ago. You know, Lecrae, the Christian rapper. Um, he was mm -hmm. talking about. They said I seen you in the club, and they're like, oh, so you were there too. And, you know, that was kind of his his line. It, too. Exactly. So it takes two to tango. That's all I'm gonna say. You know? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about, I guess, double standard of um, even I know this is a little more ancient and kind of the way of thinking versus how it is now a little more progressive right. in 2022. But with men being the number one customers, the number one viewers, number one watcher, and them being also the number one, like patronizing, you know, talking down on like, oh, no, I never, so pay. Funny. I, I never pay for cash. Oh, hey, no, no. And you the main <laughs> one, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, tricking, you know, like, how, I guess, how do you feel about kind of that double standard in society? I mean, it, I just look like it is what it is. It's so fun. It's funny to me that because that's so it's exactly how it is. Uh, somebody's buying it. Somebody is, you know, I don't have a huge female following, you know, and I'm a woman myself. I, I've never bought a video porn. as a woman. I have not. Maybe because I don't have to. I don't maybe whatever. My curious, it never my brain. It was that curious. Like, I got to see this. Also, men are visual beings. So, of course, like, oh, you, I caught your eye, you know, whatever. You may have been too horny that night. I don't know what happened. But and now you you never watch the video and then you got to get us off your screen. Like, man, turn this off. It's just filthy, filthy. Now you want to go troll me, you know, filthy, you nasty. Oh, wow. Is that now you, you got you got to go to Twitter and then look up. Hey, <laughs> All right, no, that's not her page. That's her page. Okay, okay. And then you got to act. That's a, that's a lot. And that to me, is, oh, I never understood that. Like you came to me, I didn't come to your page knocking on. Hey, follow me right now and talk about me. I never asked you to do that. I. I just post a video, put my link. If you subscribe, you subscribe. If you don't, you don't. You know, it's like what trolls, they're going to be here till the day we die. Until the internet shuts down, at least, you know, until anything like that happens, you know. So I hate you so much. Here's my credit card information. <laughs> the, the thing I want to ask, where does your sense of humor come from? Oh, man, my, my, my upbringing, my family crazy. I just love to laugh. Like, 
Yeah, like you heard, I told you my grandparents told me to shovel shit. If you're gonna be the best, I'd be like, you're crazy. Like, why are you saying things like? And they're real southern and old, like God bless their souls. So they were really older and southern and like down south. So it was just like anything they said at their mouth was kind of crazy. And I just I am like my grandmother. I say crazy stuff, but sometimes I do it for reaction just because I'm no, so you say you be trolling too, pretty much. Yeah, I troll sometimes. I'm petty sometimes. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Took play that game, you know? Took play that. Why not? Uh, what do you think is the largest misconception of that? <sighs> that I'm a stud? Like, people think, like, I'm a stud. <laughs> that took, yeah, you saw that one, huh? No, that, that was just a funny thing because it's like, you know, it's like, what do really, people really think anyone with a low haircut and waves is? They oh, just think because I'm, I have waves. But I don't, and I, I don't strap on a lot of times my video. Oh, like part, part of me. giving that off. You know what I'm saying? Like masculine energy. You, know? like, you seem just you know? like a regular lady, in my opinion, from the interviews in our short time talking here today. So I guess it's just, uh, it, <laughs> but, but are there any other misconceptions? Uh, that porn star, you know, just hoes and we just out here fucking, like just having sex, crazy, just out here, fucking, 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 we fucking all day. Like somebody thinks I'm fucking right now. I guarantee it. After you drop this interview, I bet they thought she went to go fuck him after that. And we're not even here together. Like <laughs> in two different I, states, two different I regions. I promise you, I bet States. someone's going, I bet he got, because it's their favorite comment. Yeah, I bet he got some after the video. I'm like, sir, how did he get it? How? How? This is a job. You know we got to sign like paperwork, get tested, stuff like that. Like it's actual a job. This is a job. So, you know, I think that's one of the other uh, uh, misconceptions that porn stars just out here willy nilly fucking just having a whole bunch of wild sex and stuff, you know, so. It was like a Snoop Dogg. I don't know if you saw the Snoop Dogg thing recently, but a lady said that he smokes like 150 blunts a day and he was like, and he made a video. He's like, lady, I can't smoke. I'm a human. And he's like, you my roaches from the day and blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know, I, what I did wanted to ask, uh, speaking about that, like you said, it's a business and stuff. Um, just what are some um, safe sex or healthy sex tips uh, that, that you can get for people to, especially in the Black community? You know, you think about COVID from the shutdown. It, it's, it's kind of like a lot of people, especially in the Black community, was kind of like YOLO. You know what I'm saying? And like, Forget, you know, safety and forget health. Um, what, what are some health tips that, that you have for um, the Black community right now? You know, go, as much as we don't like doctors, I'm I'm very, uh, like, let's just say natural, holistic. Like, I like to just keep it like that. But I do believe that I go get tested. I try to stay tested once a week just because of the profession I'm in. So I'm, if I'm constantly shooting, getting tested once a week. But for the average person, you should only get tested, like, as in like uh, every three months you get tested, you know, for STDs. If you are out here willy nilly, you should get tested more often. Uh, you should probably look into the uh, PrEP, called PrEP appeal, it's called PrEP. It like starts preventing HIV or whatever. I know a lot of talents in the industry, they take that uh, too, just, you know, just to put an extra security blanket on top of it. Um, you know, take care of yourself, like just be healthy, you know, like, Take your work out. Like I work out a little bit, you know, you gotta, and then you're not gonna look like this for the rest of your life. So you gotta take care of your body. If you take care of it, they'll take care of you, you know. So care about yourself. That's all. What does self-care look like for you? Oh, so I like to stay up with my facials and stuff like that. You know, I like to get my toes done. I don't necessarily get like my nails done because I don't like fake nails. I'll go get my like, painted massages that's my little self-care thing i like massages and facials get my toes done um i like you know little girly stuff just to be cute lay down get your beauty rest you gotta get some sleep you know here lately i've been doing like a real estate uh development i just got a condo so i've been in like a construction site so i have to like wash my face every day like uh exfoliate you know every other day Stuff like that. That's just a little tip for the ladies. You know, exfoliate, honey, brown sugar, a little lemon juice, mix that up. Take your exfoliate, exfoliating gloves. And there you go. And I actually just got put on some grapeseed oil for a moisturizer. And it's, it's great. It's really great.
you uh, you briefly mentioned real estate development right there. I just want to know what are all your investments if you can share them publicly. So this is my first. This is my first um, investment. This is my passion. Like I told myself, once I got the money to do it, I'm jumping right in because I love real estate. My grandfather was an architect, and I used to watch him like design houses on a computer, like on the fat back back in the day. I used to be like a little girl, like, that is so cool. Like, how are you making a house? Like, it's a blueprint. It's, and like, that's a mansion now. How did you do that? You know, type thing. And I always just, I wanted, to, I love seeing nothing go to something. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm in my passion. Like, like I said, adult entertainment is just a tool to get me to this next step and to the next step until, you know, and uh, I think it's like seven streams of income or something makes you a millionaire or something like that. So you got to have multiple yeah, streams. Yeah, seven streams of income. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what is the uh, the big picture? What What is the, the final goal? What is the uh, ideal life for Daphne? Like? Ooh, my ideal life. That is a really good question. I just want to retire down south somewhere where my family is, um, build my house from the ground up. And I'm like real chill. I like to chill. I'm kind of old school. I wake up early. I look out the window because I like the sun, you know. Go stand on my porch, back porch or something, and kick it with my mom. Like, I'm the only child, so it's just me and my mom. And I just love, like, family. I love my family. So that's my end goal, retiring down south somewhere, letting my adult entertainment still roll in and pay for the real estate. The real estate pays for whatever else. And whatever else I have in store, you know, maybe next local mayor one day, you never know, so. Um, oh, a more shallow question, and Mark, <laughs> culture, just to prepare you, I, who is the biggest celebrity you've had in your DMs? Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> but if, if you could give the, the level of list, are they B-lister, are they an A-lister? I mean, they be on TV, they be on TV on your, on the stars app, you know, they be there. So I'll give you that. I'll give you something like that nature. So that's that. All right, Daphne. And um <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you, how you knew to ask that. How you know that was a good question. And you know, I mean it's it's kind of like a it's it's been <laughs> an age old. I can't take credit for that one. It's like uh -huh. an age old question that they are women always get asked in I've never oh, okay, okay. Like, let me okay. just like um <laughs> Uh, I do have, you know, a lot of people wrapping up now. You were talking about, you know, you kind of raised by your mom, you know, you and moms uh, hang out and stuff like that. I guess, what do you think, what, what, what are you looking for when you talk about you want to have kids later? What are you looking for in the father of your children, the future father of your children? I want him to be like really an example of like both my grandfather just put in one. Like I love a strong, hard working man. Like I like truck drivers. I like regular everyday men. Like, I like everyday me and I like truck drivers and you work for the railroad, you know, stuff like that. Like, but you have a good brain in your head, like you're smart, you know, because we need truck drivers. We need electricians. We need plumbers, barbers, you know, stuff, things like that. Like that, those are still important jobs. It keeps the world like the economy flowing. Like, honestly, you know, especially me getting into this field now, I'm like, dang, I need an electrician. I wish I had a man. That was my, my man could be an electrician. I'm going to build me a man. Hold on. You know, so I like the everyday type of guy. I don't really like, you know, I, you got to have some money, though. You got to have some money and take care of business. And I'm kind of big on gender roles, too. Like, you got to take your garbage out and fix the car. You got to do man stuff. Like, I don't really mess around with no soft guy. I like a little raggedy around the edge, a little rough, you know, so. It, it sounds like everything you're telling me is like your destiny brings you back to Mississippi at like the... <laughs> <laughs> like I'm the also, life like, I need to be right there down south somewhere. Like some I'm country, lost. you know, it, like that's the lifestyle that you want. Uh, for social, where, where can people follow you? Where can people keep up with you? All that good stuff. Okay, you can follow me on Instagram at Daphne uh, Thick Ass. My page currently has like 92,000 followers. It's a lot of fake pages, so that's why I say that. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Thick Ass Daphne. It's the page with like 400 something K. And you can follow my YouTube channel, Riding Shotgun with Daphne. Make sure you like and subscribe and, you know, tune in on my videos. Are you going to pay for the blue uh, check mark on Twitter? 
you got to pay for that? Well, no, no. Nowadays, you can't. Like, if you're not verified, you can just pay $8 to get verified. What? I ain't know that. See, I ain't really big on technology like that. Somebody take care of that stuff for me. So I didn't even know. Wow. That's good to know. So what you what should I pay for? Or what you think? Or? No, no, no. no. I, oh. I, think, I think it looks it looks kind of looks kind of whack, you know. So, oh, okay. oh, oh, you gotta pay for social media, like earn kind it of, naturally type in my day. Opinion. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Especially for someone who doesn't care, that's gonna make it look like you do care about technology and applications right. and all that. But uh, Daphne, we appreciate the time so much today. Rashad Mulligan for rolling out. Until next time, you all take care. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. No problem, no problem. Give yourselves.